I mean, look at Kelly. She looks like a million bucks. And there are people who come into our center and they discover that they throw away all those arduous diets and carb counting and so forth. And instead, they're just eating a plant-based diet. Their metabolism rises about 16% after a meal. So the weight just comes off. Uh, now, a lot of people will do it because it's the only diet that opens up the arteries again. So if you're headed for a heart attack or a stroke, this is the way that no other diet can do this, but a plant-based diet opens the arteries again. And, and by the way, for any men in the audience, those artery blockages don't just cause heart attacks, they also cause impotence. I want to challenge sort of this opinion of one is better than the other, because I think where I stand is your way is healthy, but my way is healthy as well. And your way is probably better well, because it's better for the environment. But when you get to realism in, in our country. But better for some people because we also know for pregnant women, they can't necessarily cut out those animal-based vitamins that they get um, or else they'll be deficient. And so for sort of vegan women who are pregnant actually have to take supplements because they can't get certain vitamins. Well, what you're saying is it's, it's right in the sense that, that you do need to look at your nutrients, but the nutrients on a meat-based diet are much worse. When a person goes to a vegan diet and the vegetables and fruits and whole grains are coming in, your fat content goes way down and cholesterol but goes down, but beta carotene goes plant. up and vitamin E, and your nutrition overall is better for you and but better for your baby. we're not saying that you cut out the plants. That's the idea. We're saying that you have both because you can only get some of those certain vitamins from uh, so, so, the, the, the so, point that I'm making is, is vegan women in pregnancy have fewer complications healthier babies. And That's they, not necessarily no. from the vegan diet. That's necessarily yeah. because they just they're lead healthy a healthier people. lifestyle. Well, they're, they're often better yes. educated, you know, and they they're exercising, studies, and they're not and smokers. And that's why the recommendation that is, if you're pregnant and you're vegan, you are going to need to consult your doctor about taking some vitamin supplements, because you are not going to get everything you need for a healthy baby and through that diet Lisa, alone. aside from pregnant people, I am a vegetarian intellectually. But biologically, I'm from a dairy farm. And so I grew up, you know, eating beef and eating, and I do eat a lot of plant products too. You know, my plate has got its protein, its starch, and its green and orange and red things. But for me, when I tried, forget veganism, vegetarianism, I was so anemic, and I kept getting sick. So I believe that my biology... A vegetarian diet with dairy products can make you anemic, because as we all remember from those lectures uh, in medical school, the dairy products re reduce iron absorption. So... Throwing, yeah, the, throwing out the dairy is a, good, is a good thing, too. By the way, it's not as if we haven't put this to the test. Um, in fact, I have a chart. This is from the American Diabetes Association, the non-vegetarians, your average meat eater. Their body mass index, which, as you know, ought to be below 25. Oops, they're pushing 29 almost. Semi-vegetarians meet less than once a week, down to a little bit thinner than pesco-vegetarian, meaning fish, no other meat at all. They're a little thinner. The lacto-ovo, milk and egg type vegetarians, they're a little thinner. But the only group that's right in the smack in the middle of the healthy weight range is the vegans. But the reason that they put that the American Diabetes Association did it is my next chart, which is diabetes, which is an epidemic everywhere. Look at the vegans. It's almost non-existent. The meat eaters, as, as you know, you see them every day, lots of diabetes. So you're right. A person can choose where, wherever they want to go on the spectrum. But for me as a doctor, what am I going to suggest? I'm going to suggest learn how to eat brown rice and spaghetti and, to, and marinara sauces and, and have oatmeal for breakfast instead of the sausage, um, you're going to do better. Okay, wait. Hang on. Because I've gone vegan, okay? And I, I am an animal lover. And I am very aware of what conventional meat has in factory farming is doing to the planet. It is terrible for the planet. And it's actually terrible for our bodies if you're eating corn-fed beef with antibiotics and hormones and fish that's loaded with mercury. So I get all of that, I really do. But I'll be honest with you, when I went vegan, I felt terrible and my concern is that for the masses, they don't know how to do this. It's, it's not accessible for them. I don't think they have the knowledge to do it. And so I feel like there's a middle ground. I, I do grass-fed beef once a month. I do ethical seafood and egg occasionally. I think there's a balance. And I know that I've been healthy, and I have a lean body fat. You know, so, I'm, uh, so here's what we've learned yeah. here. That's the diet that works for you. And Kelly, a vegan diet works for you and right. Dr. Bernard. And I love that. And, and Caitlin, you're going to occasionally have some meat, but I think you're going to eat your way. So in the end, figure out a healthy diet that works for you. And I applaud Dr. Bernard all the work that your organization does. I mean, just fabulous. <laughs>